We just reviewed very exciting cars like the Volkswagen Golf GTI as well as the Cupra Leon. We even had a very big, spacious, full of presence sort of car like the Hyundai Palisade. But every once in a while, we get to review bread and butter cars like this one. This is the all new Skoda Octavia. Dull. I don't quite like the colour. The colour sorts of make me feel like I'm 46 instead of 36. But you cannot deny the fact that the car looks good now. It's more refined. Now the Skoda Octavia of past used to have two headlamps divided. But Skoda has sort of refined the whole looks of the headlamps by dividing the taillights with daytime running lights here. So it's still a very coherent sort of look, but it hasn't lost its identity. And so is the grille. The grille is still here, more refined, slightly slimmer, not too in your face, but it's still instantly recognizable as a Skoda. Only problem is, with a car like this, despite its bow lines on the bonnet, and how good and modern it actually looks, I won't actually take a second glance if I see this car on the road. The Skoda Octavia Mild Hybrid is priced from $116,900 to $128,900. The 1.5-litre turbocharged engine produces 148 brake horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. The seven-speed transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.5 seconds. For more details on Skoda Octavia Mild Hybrid or any other car, head on to sgkarma.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Electric tailgate as standard for the Octavia. Now this is where the car really, really shines. This, what you're looking at, is 600 litres worth of boot space. It's actually even more than cars above its class. So obviously, it'll pass the anti-trolley's length test with ease as well as check-in luggage and it'll still fit two and a half of me inside here with all these in place without any fuss. Now to give you a perspective of how it really looks, let's take all this barang barang out. There you have it, 600 litres worth of boot space and for some reason, if this isn't enough, if you're helping friends and family move house, you can just unhook this and the rear seats will knock down. It will not fall flat, but at least you know you have enough length to move bed frames, I don't know, table, something long. I don't know what you guys do, wakeboard or something, I don't know. But it'll definitely fit. And on top of that, you can still have a lot of space to put your tapau stuff here. You have hooks right here, very smartly invented, very cleverly invented, you know, just to hook stuff here. And if it's not, it's just going to fall back in place. Same for here. And there's even more hooks by the side to put your drinks, your copy ping or something. So yes, it is a fine boot, man. The Octavia continues to impress at the rear with its space. I mean, just look at this amount of crazy leg room as well as headroom. So I'm about 1.6 meters tall. I reckon uh, someone who's about 1.8 meters would easily fit inside here, no fuss. Problem is, the hump here is relatively high and because the center seat is also slightly raised. So when you sit in the center, you sort of have to put your feet around and that sort of compromise on your buddy's leg room as well as shoulder room. So you can still fit three at the back with a bit of a squeeze, but I reckon the Octavia is still best left for two. Good thing is the car comes with isofix points here as well as here. So it's quite child friendly. And another thing that's really good is Thank God it comes with rear aircon vents, especially in crazy weather like this. It doesn't come with climate control, but considering the price that you're paying in the car in this segment, having rear aircons is still quite impressive. You get small little cubby hole here as well. I don't really know what you can put here. You can't really put coins. You can't really put a phone because it's like too big. So I suppose you can put something. I just don't know what you can put. What you can do with your phone is you can actually slot it in 
a cut out here that's made for phone. There's even like a phone sign right here to tell you that it's made for your phone. So it's actually very well thought out. It's actually very user friendly. And of course, you can slot your books and magazines and even your laptop here as well. No issue. Everywhere else, it's all sort of hard plastics. You can feel, you can hear it. It's all hard plastics around. You get some soft leather stuff around here, but mostly hard. Um, I wasn't expecting anything less. It sort of feels tacky, but again, I wasn't expecting anything uh, more. In fact, I wasn't expecting anything more than this. This is, after all, um, a Skoda Octavia, not a superb or not anything of a higher class. Um, so I can definitely accept this. You also get hooks here, so you can tap out. So if the hooks in the boot is just not enough for you, if you're tap for like 25 people, <laughs> okay, maybe that's exaggerated a little bit, like maybe like, like eight people or something, you can actually still have option to put uh, your tapau stuff from the hooks here. Everywhere else, it feels very good. It looks quite decent as well. Oh, and wait a minute, and you get this too. What is this? You get like cup holders here that's really small. I don't really know what you can fit. You can probably fit water bottle, but nothing more. Um, it looks different from the rest. I, I wasn't expecting this actually. I thought it would fold down complete, completely, but it can't. But at least you know that you can fit another phone. And you have access to the boot as well. So if you want to take out barang barang from here, you can also do that. Excellent. Now at the helm, everything is all nice and dandy. It's all drab in black, something that I really like. I kind of like my car, car's cabin in black. And, and this sort of brings it all out. And it sort of breaks up all that blackness with like this cloth-like material in grey, silvery bits right here, as well as the chromes around the gear lever around here, as well as here. So it doesn't feel like it's all drabby. It's still very premium gives you that sort of premium feel which is good now i'm faced with a multifunctional steering wheel that looks very futuristic you look at this and you instantly recognize this as a steering from skoda so if you look at reviews previously like the coming or the scala it has the same futuristic steering wheel two spoke sorts of you know all this thing looks very nice beyond that is an uh, instrument panel full, fully digitalized you can customize how you want the screen to look via all these little buttons here very straightforward, no second guessing. Um, but this, all these, isn't really the important thing. What I really want to touch on is this screen right here. As with all the cars that were recently launched from Volkswagen Group, um, like the Golf or the Seat Leon, um, as well as Octavia, they all come with new screen. This is 10 inch, and they all have different ways different designs so to speak to different shade you know the different brands and i kind of like this because it's very user friendly there's a little bit of you feel like there's a little bit of lag but it's very forgivable all the information you have is here and if i just pull this down you have the notifications from your phone if you need to and you can have the option of the start stop right here air circulation as well as bluetooth so you don't have to like other cars dive into several different menus just to deactivate the start stop function so that's always a good thing you go into menu you can have everything that you want here including the background lighting you can choose like skoda color which will change accordingly winter summer ocean race which will be red individual as well as automatic i'm into ocean so that's fine <laughs> um but there are actually more buttons than say the golf like right here physical buttons are right here so it feels good it feels like old school it feels like you know when you press the button i can activate the climate control just by pressing the climate one here everything you need is here you have the smart aircon where you can cool your feet or defog your windows so it's very user friendly including the driving modes as well as the park assist it's all here one complaint for some reason i have absolutely no idea why they have the slider here. Now the slider, this portion here is used to adjust the volume of your radio or at least the sound system. If you're not going to use this, right, you will actually have to roll this one. Can you hear that? And then to lower the volume, I just have to... So it's a bit annoying. It's not a physical knob that you usually get. I don't know, this is... I, I don't like the slider, but you sort of have to get used to. If not, just 
toggle with this, which is what I always do. Now, lower bottom part is a wireless charging right here that's big enough to fit my phone. You get two USB-C ports. And of course, further up is the same gear lever that all the recent cars have been getting from Volkswagen Group, of course, including the Audi A3 as well. All the small little gear lever which you can't rest your hand on and drive like this you sort of just have to drive with two hands you get cubby holes here that will fit water bottles you get auto hole function which is great um, and a small little hole right here that will fit the key fork now inside here you have nothing but just empty space so you don't get 12 volt socket you don't get any usb-c ports you don't get any usb ports as well which i suspect if you need a usb port you might need an adapter because it only comes with USB-C ports. Elsewhere, everything is great, feels good, looks good, including the seats that are relatively comfortable. Only question is, can this car drive as comfortable as it looks? One way to find out. The Skoda Octavia that we have here has the same engine as you'll find in the Golf or the Leon. 1.5 liter mild hybrid engine pumps out some 148 brake horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque to the front wheels. But here's the thing it feels punchy in real life driving. Yes, it does. As with the Golf or the Leon, it feels punchy. This 1.5 liter does a very, very good job in producing all that power right through to the front wheels. But the only, see, the only problem is, as you go around bends, it doesn't instill you with that confidence that the Golf does, or even the Leon. Granted, they are slightly smaller cars because, of, of course, these are like the cousins, hatchback no less. I say cousins because they're all based on the same platform, right? This, of course, still retains its compact sedan body type. It feels a little bit more predictable. It feels, it doesn't feel slow, but that's the thing. It feels a little bit more dull, for lack of a better word. I can't say it's boring, but it's definitely dull. Boring seems to be a strong word because I think boring would probably be better fit for a car that's also slow. But the Octavia isn't slow, you see. Problem is, the steering doesn't give you the sort of feedback that's required. There's a lot of roll when you go around bends. And it doesn't instill that, and because of all this, it doesn't instill that confidence. It has the grip that you need, but somehow doesn't tingle your senses enough. Maybe that will be the job of the Octavia RS when it comes at the end of the third quarter this year. Just because it's a dull car, does not mean that the Octavia fail as a family hauler. Going over bumps like this, can't even be bothered to slow down a lot <laughs> because it will actually soak everything up very nicely. All the broken tarmac right now that I'm experiencing, I don't really feel that much vibration, which is good. And get this, because of its comfort bias setup, it excels as a family hauler. It does. It's not all that noisy. Honestly, cabin insulation is good. I can hear a bit of road noise, but that's very, that's only if I'm going over really like broken tarmac, as I was saying, uneven surfaces. But other than that, it's, it's really forgivable. And get this, it just feels like driving this car is very easy because of its compact dimensions. It's very easy to place on the road. I can go around bends all day long and still feel like, oh, I'm not gonna eat into other people's day. I'm not gonna curb my rim, you know what I mean? But yet, the people who are sitting in this car will still feel comfortable and spacious. I think that's the best part about the Octavia, is that you get the best of everything. You get the best of good looks, spacious cabin, premium feel, and yet easy to place on the road, easy to drive. The Octavia isn't made for excitement, it's made the ferry people from point to point in a very safe, fast free, comfortable, spacious manner. For that, yes, the Octavia excels. If you are watching this 
And if you are think if you are thinking about that sort of car, you are definitely watching the right review. And for a car that actually hauls your family from place to place in a comfortable manner, it means nothing if it can't do it safely. Thankfully for the Skoda Octavia here, let's take a look. It actually comes with a lane assist, cruise control, a limiter, side assist, which is you know essentially just your blind spot assist. Which is all these are the kinds of safety systems that keep you safe prevents you from getting into an accident. At least you know that there are systems helping you out. So the Skoda Octavia 1.5 mild hybrid, is it a will buy, won't buy or go try? My answer, will buy. Despite me thinking that this car is dull, boring, predictable, I don't even like the colour, I will buy this car. This car is like a staycation. After all the sports car that I'm driving, that I own, all the hard stiff suspension, having a car like the Skoda for the past several days makes me feel like I was on a holiday. It's comfortable, it's spacious, it feels good, drives well. It makes the family happy. And once it makes the family happy, what more could I possibly ask for? Considering the price that you're paying, you're actually getting a lot of car. So yes, this is definitely a will buy. So there you have it guys, that's the review of the all new Skoda Octavia Mild Hybrid. Hope you guys enjoyed the review as much as I've driven the car. Please do share the video with your friends and family and don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also comment in the comment box below and let us know what you think about the all new Skoda Octavia. Is it a will buy, won't buy or go try? Also follow us on TikTok at SG Carmart. In the meantime, stay safe, be well.